you have any idea when you started shooting what it would mean for you and your life and your relationship to China? No, I had no idea. Um, I went back to China, had a different film in mind. I was going to do a film about sex workers, especially the sex workers who worked in the Ten Yuan Brothel, which is um, they charge two dollar per service, Ten Yuan in Chinese currency. And I was hoping that I could contact Ye Haiyan Sparrow, and she would introduce me to those sex workers, which otherwise I may not get access to. And I contacted Ye Haiyan when I was still in New York. She said, we hadn't met yet. Why don't you come back to China and we can talk from there? So I went back to China and the day I arrived, I called her and I said, hey, I'm here, can we meet? And she said, no, like I'm busy doing something and she wouldn't tell me what she was doing. And she... Um, Did she not trust you or was it just... I. At the time, I couldn't tell because she wouldn't tell me what she was doing. And I kept asking, so when do you think you will go back home? When can I meet you? And she said, I don't know, maybe a month, maybe two. I don't know how long. And I was very uh, frustrated because it took me several calls and a lot of text messages to get her respond. And eventually, when I was on the phone, with her, and I said, would you please, Alyssa, tell me which city you are in right now? And she said, I'm in Guangzhou city. Um, it was a southern city in China. And I said, oh, great, I'm here too. Such a coincidence. I said, can we meet? And she said, oh, you're here? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, okay, then we can meet tomorrow this time, which I was not in that city at the moment. <laughs> A documentary filmmaker. It was like 400 miles away. <laughs> I took an overnight bus, six hours or so, get there the next morning. And then we, we, I went to the place we, um, we agreed to meet. She didn't show up. I waited for two hours. She never showed up. I called, I texted, I tried every kind of means of communicating with, him, with her. She never showed up. And the next day, I was thinking, I'm going to try to contact her again to get an answer and to see what her excuse would be to not show up and not explaining anything. And then after that, I w I'm going to leave. Like, that's it. I don't want to make a film with somebody that I couldn't even trust. So the next day I called her again and she apologized. She said, sorry, yesterday I was too busy. And I was talking to myself, you could have sent me a text and not. <laughs> but then we agreed to meet again. And that time I said, I'm going to meet you in your hotel so you don't have to come out. And also that way that I would definitely find her. So when I went to the hotel and she came out and she said, sorry, I was in the meeting um, and the meeting's still going on. If you don't mind waiting, you can come in and sit there for two hours. So I went in and they were discussing the protest. And at the time, I had heard so much about the rape case. It was all of the newspapers and TV and social media. And I knew there was a huge controversy behind it. And seeing the full room of activists and lawyers discussing that case, and they knew a lot of inside stories, how the victim's family were silenced. And listening to them discussing about it and talking about how to plan the protest, I was so intrigued. So at the end of the night, they were talking about going to the protest and they needed somebody to make that video of not like non-suicide testimony. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can do it for you. I have professional equipment. And they, they let me do it. And after I did it, I said, I wanted to go. And, and they said, are you sure? It's, you've never been to a protest and it's really risky and you might get detained or even killed. And I said, yes, I'm sure I wanted to go. And they said, okay, you have to leave all your suitcase, every, like everything that would review your identity. You cannot bring a tripod. You have to be like just a, a backpack so you can run whenever you need it to. Mm. So then I went. I wonder, did you ever, at what point did you tell her that you weren't in Guangzhou? 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 I don't think I had told her. You never told her that? I. Probably have not, because then everything just went crazy, yeah. and then those things were just kind of 
got forgotten along the way. So this sounds like one of those situations where there was a cliff and you took a step and then you just kind of fell and then there was no time to think about what、yeah. you were getting yourself into. 